Hello guys and welcome to Doki Doki Literature Club. This is a visual novel sort of dating sim like game. Uh, dating sims aren't games that I really play all that often, but this one caught my attention many years ago and it's probably, in my opinion, one of the best in its genre, although I'm not very, you know, I'm not really into dating sims like I said. But I know for some this may look like something really stupid, but uh, you know, just give it a shot. I think it's really good. Anyways, I know we just went from one uh, visual novel to another, so you might notice that some of my voices are similar, and that's because I don't have a very good range in terms of voice acting, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. <clears throat> hey! I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is Sayori, my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let Sayori catch up to me. Ha! <sighs> ha! I overslept again, but I caught you this time. So, pause here just for a second. Um, interesting thing that I want to talk about. The main character here, he has a few different names. He doesn't have like a 100% set official name. Most fans uh, just call him MC, and I think even the creator uh, usually refers to him as MC. On the console versions of the game, I think if you don't put in anything, the default is just player, because I think in the script, it's like the way you'd write it out is like bracket, player, bracket, or something like that, as in like you're supposed to insert something there. In DDLC Plus, which is pretty much like a bonus, like, updated version of the game, which I'm playing the original version just for, like, personal preferences, but in some of the bonus content in there, they just call him the protagonist. And then the gameplay trailer for DDLC Plus uh, refers to him as Ive, but that has stuff to do with uh, DDLC Plus story stuff and content. And I don't really have time to get any, into any of that. So I just decided to call our protagonist MC, you know, short for main character. I forget if I already said that, but it's like pretty basic and boring, but you know, it gets the job done. Uh, as for our protagonist here, he is like your basic, like everyday faceless protagonist for a visual novel. He doesn't really have in official design except for in DDLC Plus which is like here's what he would have looked like if he actually appeared on screen instead of just being our sort of point of view character here. So the DDLC Plus design is pretty much what I imagine for him but you imagine him however you want. Anyways enough of my preamble let's just actually get into reading some of the dialogue here. Maybe but only because I decided to stop and wait for you. Eh you say like you say that like you were thinking about ignoring me. Also, side note, I know I just got done with a side note, but this game often has like noises and stuff like that that are commonly made in anime and stuff like that. Uh, and so sometimes there will be a noise that I'm not really good at making, so I might just like skip over it or give it like a half-hearted attempt like this eh here at the beginning of Sayori's uh, speech bubble, or text box rather. That's mean, MC. Well, if people stare at you for acting weird, then I don't want them to think we're a couple or something. Fine, fine. But you did wait for me after all. I guess you don't have it in you to be mean even if you want to. Whatever you say, Sayori. <laughs> we cross the street together and make our way to school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their daily commute. By the way, MC, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not really interested in joining any clubs. I haven't been looking, either. Eh, that's not true. You told me you would join a club this year. Did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. 
Sayori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Uh-huh. I was talking about how I'm worried that you won't learn how to socialize or have any skills before college. Your happiness is really important to me, you know? And I know you're happy now, but I'd die at the thought of you becoming a neat in a few years because you're not used to the real world. You trust me, right? Don't make me keep worrying about you. Alright, alright. I'll look at a few clubs if it makes you happy. No promises, though. Will you at least promise me you'll try a little? Yeah, I guess I'll promise you that. Yay! Why do I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl? More than that, I'm surprised I even let myself relent to her. I guess seeing her worry so much about me makes me want to ease her mind at least a little bit, even if she does exaggerate everything inside of her head. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. Clubs. Sayori wants me to check out some clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Hello? Sayori. Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. I look around and realize that I'm the only one left in the classroom. I thought I'd catch you coming out of the classroom, but I saw you just sitting here and spacing out, so I came in. Honestly, you're even worse than me sometimes. I'm impressed. You don't need to wait up for me if it's going to make you late to your own club. Well, I thought you might need some encouragement, so I thought, you know. Know what? Well, that you could come to my club. Sayori. Yeah? There's no way I'm going to join your club. Eh, meanie. Sayori is vice president of the Literature Club. Not that I was ever aware that she had any, any interest in literature. In fact, I'm 99% sure she only did it because she thought it would be fun to help start a new club. Since she was the first one to show interest after the one who proposed the club, she inherited the title Vice President. That said, my interest in literature is guaranteed to be even less. Yeah, I'm going to the anime club. Come on, please. Why do you care so much anyway? Well, I kinda told the club yesterday I would bring in a new member. And Natsuki made cupcakes and everything. <laughs> Don't make promises you can't keep. I can't tell if Sayori is really that much of an airhead or if she's just so cunning as to have planned all this out. I let out a long sigh. <sighs> Fine. I'll stop by for a cupcake, okay? Yes, let's go! And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul for a cupcake. I dejectedly followed Sayori across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year activities, classes and activities, rather. Sayori, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. Everyone! The new member is here! I told you, don't call me a new member. Huh? I glance around the room. Welcome to the Literature Club. It's a pleasure meeting you. Sayori always says nice things about you. Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Ah, MC. What a nice surprise. Welcome to the literature. Welcome to the club. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. What are you looking at? If you want to say something, say it. S sorry. Natsuki. Hmm. <laughs> the girl with a sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, uh, is one I don't recognize. Uh, just one quick thing I'm going to get into here two characters in this game that like some people uh you know pronounce differently are sayori and natsuki sayori uh i just try to pronounce like i'm pretty sure it's how it would be pronounced in japanese and same with natsuki some people pronounce them as uh sayori and not and natsuki I'm not much of a stickler for how people pronounce uh, names, especially in visual novels that don't have voice acting. So you can pronounce it however you want, but that's just how I'll be pronouncing it. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. She's also the one who made cupcakes, according to Sayori. You can just ignore her when she gets moody. Sayori says that quietly into my ear, then turns back toward the other girls. Anyway, this is Natsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. 
Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with people like Sayori and Natsuki. Ah, well, it's uh, nice meeting both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, MC. Monica smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me uh, so genuinely feels a little... Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, MC. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Then how about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. As Sayori mentioned, it's been widened so that there's one space next to Monica and one space next to Sayori. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Whoa! Natsuki lifts the foil to the tr off the tray to reveal a dozen white, fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing, and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Sayura grabs one first, then Monica. I follow. I wish I had something to eat right next to me so I could... But then that'd be gross, like, eating into the microphone, so... It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full. Yeah, see, that's why I wanted to do it, just for the purpose of the gag. It's delicious! Sayori talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my fingers, looking for the best angle to take a bite. Natsuki is quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Why are you thanking me? It's not like I... Haven't I heard this somewhere before? Made them for you or anything? Uh, one thing that you'll notice uh, quickly in this game is that these characters are very much tropey and built around various tropes used in uh, anime, manga, and other Japanese uh, types of media. Eh? I thought you technically did. Sayori said, Well, maybe, but not for, you know, you, dummy. Alright, alright. I give up on Natsuki's weird logic and dismiss the conversation. Yuri returns to the table, carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, uh I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri is just trying to impress you. Uh, uh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I, I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but... I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow, then smiles at me. So, what made you consider the Literature Club? Um, I was afraid of this question. Something tells me I shouldn't tell Monica that I was practically dragged here by Sayori. Well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Sayori seemed really happy here, so... That's okay. Don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. 
Monica really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? Yeah! We'll do our best. You know it! Everyone enthusiastically agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these three. Maybe that's why they were all so delighted by the idea of a new member joining. Though I still don't really know if I can keep up with their level of enthusiasm about literature. So, MC, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. M manga I mutter quietly to myself, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. N not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own la lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp at something I can relate to at the minimal level. This Ray Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Really? I wouldn't have expected that, Yuri. For someone as gentle as you. I, I guess you could say that. But if a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. So real horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were working on a poem called... D don't say it out loud! And give that back! Fine, fine. <laughs> your cupcakes, your poems... Everything you do is just as cute as you are. Sayori sidles up behind Natsuki and puts her hands on her shoulders. I'm not cute. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Eh? Well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? N no Natsuki averts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities, and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's the same for Yuri. Aw, I wanted to read everyone's poems. We all sit in silence for a moment. Okay, I have an idea, everyone. Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then, next time we meet, we'll all share them to eat with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um... Yeah, let's do it. Plus, now that we have a new member, I think it will help us all get a little more comfortable with each other and strengthen the bond of the club. Isn't that right, MC? Monica smiles warmly at me once again. 
Hold on, there's still one problem. Eh? What's that? Now that we're back to the original topic of me joining the club, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Sayori may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and... Um... I lose my train of thought. All four girls stare back at me with dejected eyes. But, but I'm sorry. I, I thought... <laughs> MC... Y you all... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? That is, if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Yes, I'm so happy! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey! You really did scare me for a moment. If you really just came for the cupcakes, I, I would be super pissed. Then that makes it official. Welcome to the literature club. Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. MC, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. <laughs> y yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri and Natsuki clean up their food. Hey, hey, MC, since we're already here, do you want to walk home together? That's right. Sayori and I never walk home together anymore because she always stayed after school for clubs. Uh, sure, might as well. Yay! With that, the two of us depart the club room and make our way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the four girls. Sayori, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most out of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. It's time to write a poem. Pick words you think your favorite club member will like. Something good might happen with whoever likes your poem the most. So, we come to the end of our f of the first chapter of sorts. Uh, some people refer to them as days, some people refer to them as chapters. Whenever we go to the uh, poem minigame here, that's like the end of a chapter. I think in the game files, that whole section we just went through is called Chapter Zero or something like that. But anyways, first of all, one thing I just want to say is that uh, my voices, I'm trying to differentiate the four girls like I'm having trouble differentiating uh, Yuri and Monica and I'm also having trouble differentiating uh, Sayori and Natsuki. Natsuki's voice is like for those who watched it my clover voice from nine hours nine persons nine doors and then Sayori is just supposed to be my voice but just a little higher and that can sometimes cross over into clover territory and then Yuri is supposed to be like a shy sort of just like whisper kind of that's still kind of in high pitch and then uh monica is sort of like kind of like my lotus voice from if we're making nine hours nine persons nine doors comparisons of just like you know a bit deeper and slower and a bit more breathy so as we'll go along i'll eventually get better at doing the voices second thing if we want to i'll be recapping some trivia throughout this let's play but if you do want to check out some trivia after you've gone through the game or you've finished watching my Let's Play, uh, make sure to watch uh, Dan Salvato, the creator of this game, his live streams that he did for like the one year anniversary of this game. Because he gives out a lot of trivia and his thoughts uh, when it comes to making the characters and they're, it's all super interesting. Anyways, let's get to the actual poem game here. Anyways, we have three girls that we can impress. We can't impress Monica because he thinks that Monica is a way out of his league, but I guess he thinks that Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri are in the same ballpark as him or something like that in terms of attractive attractiveness or something. The way that the poem game works, uh, at least to my understanding, is that 
Like I mentioned earlier, you have to click on a bunch of different words that you think your favorite club member will like. And then each, each word has a certain number of points that it gives to each girl. So, for example, I think infinite is like a Yuri word. Or like, meager, yeah, that's a Yuri word. So, for example, it would give like three points to Yuri, uh, one point to Natsuki, and maybe like one or two points to Sayori. I forget the exact numbers, I'll put them up on screen. And if you want your... If you want a club member to love your poem, they need to have at least 45 points, I'm pretty sure, or just the most points out of any of the characters. And then I think if you get less than 29 points, then they will uh, hate your poem and just be like, oh, this sucks. If you want more information into some of this stuff, I will, of course, as always, link to my sources in the description. Uh, I would suggest you know, finishing the game at least before you go go check those out because obviously, once again, there are massive spoilers. If you do want to figure out which words uh, will do best for each girl and you don't really have confidence in your choices, then I would suggest uh, looking up poemwords.txt from DDLC Plus or at least like something that lists all of the poem words because in DDLC Plus they do give you a list of stuff that you can copy down and, you know, cross-reference. Uh, I personally, what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna save when going into the uh, each of the poem games and I'll just hope that I actually get what I want. So here's the question now. Which girl do we want to choose? I am going to leave that for the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!